Good morning, my friends from all over the world and with a special care for the Australian audience. We have today Mr. Nigel uh, Winlan. He's running for the, to become the first prime minister in the state of Queensland here in Australia. He's, has, he's got a vast experience in this universe of cannabis. Um, we have the great pleasure having you with us, Mr. Nigel. Thanks, Ramon. Happy to be here. Appreciate you calling and giving us a chance for an interview. My brother, this platform is yours and me as a member of the, of the legalized party in Australia is more than a pleasure and a little contribution of what we can do for, for you to reach where get elected, you know, that's the most important thing, I mean. Huh? <laughs> I well, appreciate your enthusiasm <laughs> and it's good. <laughs> you never know, you never know. I have expressed uh, with many of other uh, interviewers that um, I have seen with my own eyes um, that one person can make a change. One, only one person with the proper voice and resonating their, their message has changed the fate of a whole country. A person such as yourself that went to a public space and he start expressing his ideas um, basically has influenced the outcome in the last 20 years in all South America, for good or for bad. So now you are in the spotlight of, of what can be done and it is now up to you to go all the way as it should be. Appreciate that. Appreciate your encouragement. Yeah, well, you know, that's what democracy is about. You know, you, you grow up and um, you look at history and you see people who have fought for human rights and you think, well, you know, they, they didn't see the end game and in their lifetime, but they still were able to put in the effort. And I realised living in Queensland, Australia, that the drug war was in full tilt here following people like the US and our politicians were using it as a proxy racist um, laws to, you know, uh, lock up the indigenous and um, mentally ill and the poor and anyone actually protesting, you know, because usually protesters had a bit of uh, marijuana in their pocket or something since the 70s. So uh, National Party people like where I've been from in Queensland, you know, they all had links back to, you know, South Africa and apartheid and all this sort of stuff. So any rules that they've been able to use against indigenous population and poor and anyone on the left um, and the drug laws have been at the center of that. So growing up, I saw those things happening with my friends and uh, people trying to move uh, politics forward. And, and I thought, well, I better have a go. And um, when I first voted in 1989, um, we got rid of that National Party uh, uh, government and who had been in for 20 years using uh, uh, all sorts of voting methods to keep themselves in. In Queensland, we actually don't even have an upper house. So that's, um, that's how dodgy our democracy is here in Queensland, you know, as state politics. So we're up against it. And, um, and I, that, that's what sort of has brought me into this, you know, uh, politics is like seeing the fight and realizing that not even though we not necessarily going to win, you've just got to be involved, and that's what people have um, inspired me to do. My brother, so, um, my brother, there are two uh, experiences or examples of the journey that you are embarked uh, to do. One was uh, Gandhi in India when he his main purpose was to defeat the. United Kingdom uh, uh, supremacy uh, and colonize um, uh, <clears throat> uh, over 300 years they did in, in India. Um, they were just laughing at him when he said that his only purpose was for them to leave the country. 20 years after they had to leave. And it was yep. the hardest, step in any journey, in any project is the first step and you have already done it. The legalized party has already done it. So 
And the second one is just the country that you just mentioned in South Africa. Mandela is for me a hero. He resisted. And when you have a tyranny in, uh, on your neck, all you need to do is just resist because we are in the right side of history. I am originally from Venezuela. I had to run, uh, run away from communism. That's why I end up in this wonderful um, country of ours in Australia, which, which I am grateful without any limit from my heart. And yet there are so many things that we need to help to evolve because it is our responsibility as citizens of this country. Having said that, Mr. Nigel, yeah. tell us about yourself, my brother. The audience wants to know more about you. How did you end up in the cannabis? Tell All us right, well, experience with the prohibition. <laughs> well, you know, the first thing was, you know, like you're growing up and, um, and you're sort of seeing, you know, like as from you going from teenagers to adults and, um, and you're just seeing the fear in the eyes of, you know, your friends and stuff whenever a police car would come. And in Queensland, um, you know, as soon as the coppers knock on the door, they'll, they'll, you know, they'll grab the first few, you know, and they would bash them and take them away. So I always thought that was, I had to take, the, I wanted to take that fear away from my friends, you know, so I thought, you know, legalization would be the only, only way to do that. So, I, you know, um, in about the early 90s, Nimbin Mardi Gras, they had the, you know, the, they had a, a protest called Beyond Prohibition. And I went down there and I watched a man go up to the police station and, you know, ask to be arrested. And, you know, I was only 22 and his name was Bob Hopkins. And, and he showed so much bravery, you know, like you had people like, you know, Nelson Mandela and Gandhi were coming out of prison. But, you know, we do live in Australia. It is a great spot. But, you know, it was, it's, you we still got that underlying fear. And when this man went up to those police and, you know, said, arrest me and, you know, and they didn't want to arrest him. And, you know, that, that was the launching to their, to the New South Wales um, and beyond prohibition uh, sort of protest movement. And, um, and I was just so impressed by his bravery. And I thought, you know, if they can do that here, I can go back home and do it. So we had a, a state elections in the 95 and um, I, we helped about six independents run in various uh, marginal seats, and um, we did all right. Um, and then, uh, then, and that was when the uh, the Labor Party came back in again, and they sort of promised in opposition that they would decriminalise and at least, and then um, you know, and and do some reform on uh, drug drug law reform. But uh, and we handed all these. Um, signatures into the opposition health sp spokesperson who became the premier, Mr. Peter Beatty, who, who sort of works for Sky News and all these sort of people now. And, and he, you know, promised, and I walked with him on various, you know, um, by-elections and stuff. My first by-election was in 1996. And, um, and because we weren't getting much help with putting a party together, I changed my name to Nigel Free Marijuana. So I, I took my last name off and I put changed my last name to Free Marijuana so we could have it on the ballot box and get some more advertising like that. And when I ran in my first by-election in 1996, I got 3.7%. It was pretty good. I beat the actual Democrats and a few other, few other big parties and things like this. But, you know, we didn't make, you have to get 4% to get your, you know, votes back and your money back so I, I didn't didn't have never made that cut so um so that was a big eye opener for me and it was good you know to have you know that 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 on the ballot box and we were just hoping to wait and get a party going so we had that idea in 96 and then in 98 there was another state election i ran again and then in 2000 there was a by election in Indooroopilly here in Ryan in Queensland and it was a a liberal stronghold and um i was running and the labor party approached me and wanted to do a preference swap and um and they offered to pay for my photocopying and everything and being naive and all this sort of stuff i didn't really realize that was a um you know sort of probably against the rules and things like that so but then you know end up having the federal police uh 
investigate me for you know, supposed corruption, you know, for giving my preferences for these things like this. But, you know, obviously once I got elected, I mean, arrested, I didn't say anything and no charges followed through and there was all, but the media took it and ran with it. And my preferences actually got the Labor Party elected in that blue ribbon uh, liberal seat. And, and there was a very small um, majority at that moment with John Howard and, um, and, and Kim Beasley were running. And so they were, they were really upset about this sort of stuff. And they had a few more by-elections later that year in July. And um, which, you know, sort of was sending momentum towards Labor. But then September 11 happened. And Johnny Howard was over there, and and um and that just changed the course of politics, you know, because everyone went very conservative. And um at that point, then we had actually got the Hemp Party um, as a federal party, and that was the first time um we we had run in the by election in February, and then in the state in the whole election at the end, and um at, at in at the end of two thousand and one, and there was only um six six people running in the senate at that time in queensland and now we've you know we've got a a meter long page now so it's become very popular politics but back then you know 20 odd years ago no one was really getting involved and you know everyone was sort of pretty conservative but um so it was building up momentum through there and like i said so i'd been in there for and then between that by by election and the federal election the Australian Electoral Commission took that name, Nigel Free Marijuana, that I had on the roll, on the deed poll, on all my various bank accounts and all this sort of stuff. And they actually took it off the electoral roll and told me it was, even though I'd been running with it for five years, told me that I couldn't run with it anymore. And it was fictitious. And um, so they took it off the roll. So they literally wiped me off the roll. But we had some good barristers and QCs who came along and helped me. And we appealed that decision. And put me back on, on the roll. So even, you know, that's the sort of government we have here. Even if you change your name to a silly name like Free Marijuana, they are still willing to go in and take you literally off the roll so you can't be involved in politics, you know? Well, so that was a, um, yeah. Mr. Nigel, uh, <clears throat> uh, the governments around the world have that power to, yeah. to dismantle any citizen at their will uh, when they feel threatened. Um, however, the times have changed. With the power of social media, they are more uh, careful to do these kind of things because it's not as before. Um, now people spend more time uh, following the happening through the social media rather than believing what they watch on TV because most, most of the population knows that the TV is at service of the status quo or the governments of the moment. And they yes. simply, you know, they resonate to whatever they wanted to talk. It is very simple. However, um, in terms of our common interest, which is to the cannabis itself, and there is no way that this can be hidden anymore. The United States, which is the one who set up the prohibition, are dismantling the prohibition. And, and they're doing it very aggressively and very fast. Um, Australia, with our geopolitical um, climate, situation can become a hub of, of this business in, around the world. And this mentality is simply holding back the great potential that we can actually do for the benefit of the region. Therefore, from my perspective, what the political party, the cannabis party is doing at the moment is starting to become a threat to them because there is no turning back, especially with people such as yourself and the other candidates that I have been interviewing lately. There is no coming back. They either, either have to help or stay behind because the change is happening. The perception has changed. More people are aware, are more knowledgeable, 
of the situation. And quite honestly, it is much cheaper and faster to vote them out with the power of democracy than try to teach them or educate the status quo that is not interested in learning. Mm. They're not interested. I, I totally agree, you know, and, and, it, and it blows my mind why these politics, I, I, the only reason I can think of is that they've just been brainwashed by the Murdoch press and the drug war, you know, like, and they sort of, so somehow they have this morality that's left over, this zero tolerance prohibition morality, which, you know, it's sort of like, you know, you know, anti-sex or something like that, you know, like they say, you can't do this, you can't touch this, you know, so like they have, they, they, um, so they, so for somehow they get, they feel morally empowered by this, um, attitude. So I can't, I, we could be a, you know, a powerhouse. We have all this land, we have all this place where we, you know, we could use this um, product, but I, 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 and I've been sitting around here for almost 30 years now um, with farmers and politicians and, and none of them move the dial at all. Or in fact, they just seem to enjoy the power that the drug laws give to them in being able to get into people's houses and, you know, and, and lock up indigenous people because we are I mean, maybe not over in West Australia but in Queensland we're very racist here and the police and the politicians are just it's it's just second nature so they you know they use these the power so I don't know I, I hope that you know we can get this but I but in my heart of hearts especially in Queensland I just believe that these people are, are, are malevolent and they just don't want to fix it because they enjoy the crushing power that that gives to them yeah. I'm sorry Hi. to listen to this, and I hope with my uh, best will that things evolve from this racist behavior because it's not helping Australia at all. Uh, I know. It's a, this is a multicultural country where um, a lot of um, uh, uh, cultures and, and nationalities from all over the world has come here to embrace this beautiful country and contribute for the good um, evolution of it. So let's pray that people such as yourself can be elected um, and give the best out of yourself to make things better. I do, I do. And, you know, and, and uh, you know, and all we can do is try and, um, you know, and, and yeah, that, that's all we can do. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. But if you were elected, Nigel, beyond the legalization of the marijuana itself, and knowing the power that hemp can do for the economies of the countries around the world, what would be your plan once you are elected? What will you be proposing? Well, the first thing you know I would do is sort of like I'd be getting rid of any of those people who've been charged out of jail, you know, like on, and just on on cannabis charges, and I'd get rid of all people's like myself, you know, because I I've had a criminal record since I was twenty. Uh, three or four for point three of a gram of cannabis, you know. So like, you know, that's less than this this much, you know. And I and I got fined and I got a criminal conviction. And since then, I've not been able to work get a, you know like work in a tax paying job, you know. So they've destroyed my career and any contribution I could have made towards, you know. It, so that would be the first thing I'd do. I'd get rid of everyone's records so that people can start getting involved in the, you know legal business or it's just in their legal lives you know i can't travel overseas i'll never be able to travel overseas um uh, and so you know my whole life has been shut down and cut off and so firstly i'd re you know relieve all those people who've been lives have been destroyed i'd let i've set them free and then you know i suppose you know we'd just be opening it up for you know f fiber um all the things it's available for it would be would we be going you know we could almost replace the cotton industry you know we could almost you know Paper. all those lands all those lands which have been are being you know destroyed by those other you know more intensive crops we could be using for cannabis hemp you know so i'd just be opening up the whole of you know the industry you know from seed to you know you know to final product and covering from medicinal um environmental fuel clothing textiles all the things everything would be open all the signs you have there would be you know as instantly open that's what i would do you know be an instant bill 
to make the industry go nuclear you know like if that's <laughs> <laughs> you know um, i'm listening to you um the only thing that brings in my mind is a compassion for these people because they are not guilty that they don't know about cannabis this is, has been a united states dictatorship imposed in a global matter where our politicians has been following without even understanding why they're doing it. And now that the United States is dismantling this prohibition, they feel like when the Soviet Union collapsed and the Berlin Wall was uh, being demolished, they suddenly yeah. say, oh my God, what am I going to do with my life? <laughs> so that's, <laughs> that's basically what is happening. That's I, right, and yeah, go ahead. I must congratulate to you, my brother, for your work and your passion. The way that you talk is impressive. Thanks, but mate. What would you tell the, the decision makers in this moment? Well, I would just say to them, like, look at that. We look at America. It's dismantling the very thing that you're you think that you've got to keep a hold. We're not the 51st state of the American, you know, country. We are our own country. We don't have to follow them. And in fact, why would you follow them when they're getting rid of the very thing that you're doing? So open up your eyes, wake up to the, the zeitgeist that is here. Why are you disadvantaging our society, our people, when we don't have the biggest population, but we have this land, we have this resource, we have this whole continent, which could just take us over the top of wealth and you know sustainable wealth not just digging it up and you know because that's that's where all these people are i've gone to state governments and these and johnny howard federal governments and they just tell me there's 600 years worth of coal in the galilee basin you know and there's all this and that we're not and they and they say things like we're not going to shut down coal companies we're not going to do these things because you know and this is where these leaders, so, so called, are invested. So, you know, I've gone up and asked these questions and said to you what, but they are invested in it. They are, in a sense, corrupt because they are not opening themselves up to this sustainable future. And, and no matter how much they pretend, because we are a small country, they know that they can just ride roughshod over those other industries and just call it, you know, like we, we're not set up, we don't have the cost. So, you know, they really are like the only sheriff in town. So I'd be saying, stop being the sheriff and let, and, you know, let your people free and let them work and let them, you know, let them make this country fair. And what they, you know, they say that is, you know, like they say advance Australia fair. Well, this is not fair what they're doing to, to a certain amount of the population. And it's not fair what they're doing to the environment. And it's not fair what they're doing to us you know, economically, this is just the billions that have been wasted on the drug war have, have we yielded nothing of just, and, you know, that's the sign of insanity. These people, we keep trying to offer them solutions and they keep going back down the hammer and smashing the nuts. And, and, and honestly, I've come to the conclusion that they're, they're, they're sociopaths or psychopaths because that's the only way that a person would act like that is if you want to, hurt them and take away their opportunities and i really honestly never see, i haven't seen any different in the top tier of these my our politicians in labor or liberal you know oh, and they're generational it's like these are the sons and daughters of like of these are the sons and daughters of politicians since when i was been growing up they had these premiers and and now their sons and daughters are in you know like in queensland she's the daughter of um that you know that bt premier um, you know, who was it when I first went up to him 20 years ago and offered him the, you know, the petition. Now, the daughter of one of his ministers is in continuing the same racist, you know, um, unenvironmental, uh, you know, policies. And because we only have, we don't have an upper house to, you know, check them on decisions here in Queensland, they just, it's like mob rule. They just continue doing what they do and they only increase police budgets and they never increase any um any uh you know advancing on this environmental you know solution so 
I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you my my experience. I, I you, you know, I, I just because I, I'm, I, I don't want to have malignant set hope, you know, because I've had that. I've had that for you know a long time, and and every time I come back into the fray, it sort of has got worse with our politicians, you know. So I'm, I'm I am hoping for a future, you know, and some divine intervention, but. You know, it's like you never, you know, you know, and I work my guts out to make it happen, but I've got to have that reality on the other side, you know, that these are the people we're up against. You never know, my brother, this is, this is democracy. And yeah. democracy, the power of it resides on the people. So, um, uh, and the people, the perception of cannabis is changing. The yeah. knowledge of it is getting more spread. And, our politicians, whether in Perth or in Queensland or in Victoria or New South Wales or else, they either come to the right side of, of the history or they simply will stay behind. You're right on regards of the, of the carbon industry. We should be building hundreds of biodiesel plants uh, uh, fuel with um, with hemp, and in that matter, we should cut the dependence of the oil, which is contaminating the whole world. There are yes. so many options that we can use uh, our industry for. We should not be cutting trees anymore. We should not be hemp is the solution. Hemp is the solution for our social, technological economic and, and political challenges. And okay. that's the way it is. And there are scientists, engineers, all type of professionals that are backing up our, or supporting this cause. And it, it is unstoppable. It doesn't matter what the government might do. They can put us in jail, they can break our bones, but this is not going to stop what is happening. That's so, I totally agree. and. And, you know, and that's what, you know, I, I wanted to do is I'm just going to keep standing and standing, you know, and, and I, I, you know, and just waiting, you know, well, you know, we hopefully would get elected, but just being there and is what all we can do here in Australia and keep pushing like, you know, you with your, with your um, company and, and we can just hopefully when, but they, when that, when the, the wall comes tumbling down, we will be all right, you know, like. <laughs> Cannabis has been long before our, the prohibition has survived centuries or of all kind of um, uh, adversities and is here to stay. It doesn't yes. matter what the status quo does. Nigel, what a great yes. pleasure having you with us in our show. Is, would you like to say something else before we uh, go on? I'm all right. I just thank you for the opportunity and let me just go on and my, my little ramblings and my little uh, political, you know, life and stuff. It's it's probably not as professional as you would have liked it, but this is a, you know, I'm from the trenches and this is where my be my experience. And and I and my whole hope is that it will, it, I do have that idea that it will come down, but, you know, maybe just Australia won't get that advantage that they should have, but, you know, uh, you know, uh, but I'm open. I'm open for miracles. Like I'm open for miracles. My brother, uh, the professional uh, label is, is a cliche. Don't yeah. worry about it. You are doing the best that you can. Yeah. Only one piece of an ad, of one piece of advice, uh, Nigel, yes. um, which I share with all the politicians or candidates yep. to become politicians. Yeah. Wear hemp. Wear hemp. Yep. And yep. tell everybody that you're wearing him because that will be our signature yep. That, yep. that will bring people to our side. Wear him and, and wear it proudly because that's, yep. that's, that is the change. Oh yeah, no, I've got, I've got my clothes. I've got my, I've got my, let's just have a suit. Got a suit, got to put it on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Nigel. It's been, Ramon, uh, thank you for calling me and, and have a great one and I'll catch up with you in the future when, when we're all free. We'll have another interview very soon, my man. I will assure all you. Right, then. Thank you very thank much. Thank you for calling. Bye-bye.